It has been over 30 days since I've picked up my Nintendo Switch. Never thought that that would be the case. I have been using my Steam Deck almost exclusively as a gaming console since I got it. You see, I was using my Nintendo Switch kind of. Um, I had played all the games I wanted to play and I was at the point where I was just kind of waiting for something good. I thought I was gonna get the Donkey Kong versus Mario game, but the price point just wasn't something that I was ready for. And beginning this year, I decided it was time for me to be a little bit wiser with, well, the things that I buy, especially after the whole Legion Go fiasco. I purchased the Lenovo Legion Go because I thought this is gonna be a great purchase. And then promptly returned it because it was indeed not a great purchase. That's primarily because the device itself just needs some work when it comes to its UI and its just overall enjoyment. It is overpowered for a handheld but underpowered for a gaming PC, which is essentially what it is. Even though it's a handheld, it functions as a gaming PC because <clears throat> it's booted up with Windows 11, baby. Windows 11. But yeah, it's been over 30 days. I haven't, I can't even tell you the last time that it's been that long since I've booted up the Nintendo device. And it's all the Steam Deck's fault. I've talked at length about the Steam Deck and I will keep talking about it more and more even though the PC is really gonna end up being more and more of the talk. We'll get into that in a moment. But I, uh, I really am impressed. When I first got the Steam Deck, it was, you know, oh, here we go again. I've had this device before, you know, it's not gonna be much of a difference. But when I started using it, the big thing I noticed was of course that OLED display. That was pretty much the big difference, or so I thought. See, when I got the Steam Deck before, it was on launch. Well, there was a couple things that happened at launch. It was a launch product, a new product, by Valve, and so there were a few things that it had to kink out. Kink out? Iron out? <laughs> a few kinks it had to iron out. Ooh, that would have been weird. Kink number one is it was not the best when it came to its performance. That's okay, right? It's new. I had to figure that out, and I'm surprised at how many updates the device got over its lifespan. Well, it's still getting updates, but the first preliminary release just non-stop updates i feel like every time i turned the thing on it got updates granted back when i had it it was in the height of the xbox and nintendo phase and i was still trying to figure everything out so it got very little use from me i had almost no games on steam and so playing games on that device didn't really come to me naturally so i ended up selling the first one got rid of it, was redundant. And for me at the time, it was very much so redundant. It was not redundant anymore. In fact, I find myself getting rid of other consoles in order to support the Steam Deck thing. I know that I've talked at length about the digital future and the physical future and this, that, and the other. And well, I made a point. I said that physical is the way, right? All physical. And I still stand behind that point. I think that physical gaming is by and large the most important thing console gamers can hold on to. Uh, myself being one of them, I think that having a physical copy of a game is important because these consoles are getting refreshed and when they get refreshed, often the support for those games goes away. And so preservation of that game becomes a little bit more difficult because you have a piece of hardware like a PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3 that you have to keep owning even though it's a, over a decade old because it's the only way you're gonna be able to play those games natively. Sure, you can get the PS Plus service and pay for those games in a subscription-based model, but that might not be something you wanna do. Well, I stand behind that. I still stand behind that. I think that Nintendo Switch games the same, as well as, you know, PlayStation 5, Xbox, whatever it may be, I still stand behind that statement. But here's where the difference is with Steam. Because some people have in the comments been like, hey buddy, you know that Steam is all digital, right? Gotcha. Yeah, I do. But the difference between something like Steam, the Steam Deck, your PC, is those games will stay there, depending on the device. See, I've purchased over the past 
30 something days of me owning a Steam Deck, which is my primary console or my primary gaming device now, 100% primary. Like I don't even turn on other consoles. The only console I turn on right now is my PlayStation 5 to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which I'm playing quite a lot. <laughs> It's this past weekend, I played it like 20 hours. I've never done that. Took time off. I said, hey, I need to take a little bit of time. This game I've been waiting for for years and years on end. And I really want to play at least these first couple of days as much as I can until I have to get back to full time dadding. And my wife's like, of course, take the weekend, do your thing. I know you don't get these types of games often. And so she's very gracious in that regard. And I've been able to play a ton of it. But that's the only game I'm playing not on my Steam Deck. And I'll tell you right now, if I was to have that game available to me on Steam Deck, I absolutely would have opted to play it on the Steam Deck because the portability that is granted to me in that form factor is unbelievable. I can't even tell you how great it's been having some of the games that I play there on Steam Deck. Now, I'm not playing anything graphically intensive, okay? But the games that I want to play graphically intensive, I can play on my PlayStation. Or eventually, once the day comes, because I still am more inclined to do it now, I'm hoping that I can partner with a different company to do it, because the only way I'll be able to afford it, build out a gaming rig. The Steam Deck gaming rig combo seems to really be the one-two punch. I, I can honestly say that Steam, not Steam, but the Steam Deck itself, that device paired with the lack of hardware that we're feeling or having right now for the Nintendo Switch, as well as the lack of good, solid AAA titles that are exclusive to PlayStation, has pushed me in a direction as a gamer where my last choice that I never thought has become my first choice, which is playing on something like a Steam Deck and eventually a PC. It finally has gotten to that point, and it's because Gaming consoles or these companies have kind of dropped the ball when it comes to its consistency for exclusivity. The lines that we had between PlayStation and Xbox have been blurred for, I would say, this whole generation. No one's better than the other. The exclusives that you have on Xbox are negligible at best. Sure, there's some value there with Game Pass. And PlayStation, we all know they have the exclusives. They have the God of Wars, they have the Horizon, they have the uh, Final Fantasies, at least for a short amount of time before they go over to PC. They're just not on Xbox. And Nintendo is Nintendo. They're just kind of disappointing me right now as far as releasing stuff. Tears of the Kingdom was great, loved it, it was awesome. I can assure you, and I'm sure you, I can tell you right now, the feeling I have playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, sure, that might be paired with the fact that I played a bunch of stuff before I played all of Remake and then proceeded to continue to play all of Crisis Core on my Steam Deck and then played Integrade and then played the Final Fantasy VII Re, uh, Rebirth demo the day before it dropped. I've been in this world for the past three months and I don't want to leave. But with the exception of Rebirth, all of that could be done on the Steam Deck. And I can tell you right now, while I was over at my buddy's house, he hadn't beaten Integrade yet, and he played Integrade on the Steam Deck. A game that was released later, that looked better than Rebirth did, not Rebirth, than Remake did originally. Yeah, pretty tight. That game was made backwards compatible with the, I think it was available on PlayStation. I could be wrong. That could be a PlayStation 5 only, but on the Steam Deck, it looked great. And I would argue that Rebirth can look good. It's definitely some power hungry stuff. But back to the digital thing. Yes, Steam is all digital. Yes, PC gaming is all digital. But I've purchased games, as I was saying, on my Steam Deck. The day I get a gaming PC, well, I mean, I have a very, very, low performing, but it's a PC by Geekom. It is technically a PC, it's a mini PC with an integrated graphics card, it can't run games that well. My Steam Deck outperforms it, but it's a PC. And so the games I purchased for my Steam Deck are available over there. And unless Steam goes out of business, which sure as heck aren't, I'm gonna be able to play these games for a long time doesn't matter the device, it doesn't matter the 
console. It doesn't matter anything, really. It just matters, is it able to run PC games? Steam ones, for that matter. And if it can, I will be able to play those games on a Steam Deck, a non-gaming laptop, a gaming laptop, a PC or a gaming rig, I will be able to play those games today, tomorrow, in 10 years, and in 20 years with the newest hardware without having to worry about backwards compatibility, without having to worry about where my games are because they're gonna stay supported on the device. That's the biggest difference between PC gaming and console gaming from what I've seen, at least in these short months of me investigating and doing more and more research on all that stuff. I, again, started this place talking about Nintendo. Went into Xbox because it was popular. Wanted to go back to Nintendo because that's where I thought my heart was, but discovered as a father, really where my heart is, is being able to play good games. And also, paring down so that there's not that much when it comes to choice. And as far as space is concerned, it's not practical for you dads to have to dedicate a room, such as my own, my office, to gaming. That's just not realistic. This happens to be my studio, so I can do so, but if I didn't have this YouTube channel, I would be restricted to a living room. And if I was to sit in the living room and play games hours and hours on end, not allowing my kids to use the television, not yet letting my wife use the television, it would get quite cumbersome, not cumbersome, but quite obnoxious for my family. And so as I've gotten older, as I have had children, and as I've lost time, realize that my gaming needs to be the most flexible possible. And what I'm willing to trade for that flexibility is some, not conveniences, because I think that flexible location gaming is the most convenient out there. I guess really what I'm able to trade in is ease of use. Console gaming is the easiest ever. My PlayStation is designed to be turned on and used as a gaming device. It also pairs as a multimedia device, playing Blu-rays, DVDs, and music if you have CDs, but it is designed to be used in such way. PCs are a little bit more open-ended and require a little bit more maintenance. But I'm realizing that in the, I guess, whole idea of things as I grow, as my interest is maintained, right? I still like to play video games, but the desire to play video games is begin is is out, I guess is outgrowing, right? I'm more I have more desire to play video games, but my ability to play games is becoming more difficult because of time, location, and hardware. I have to pare it down. I have to get more concise and budget friendly, right? And someone would be like, well, PCs are not budget friendly because they are devices that are expensive. Well, I'm at the point where I have to combine some of my devices. I have to combine some of the things from productivity to uh, gaming to this. And so I am having to realize that maybe multiple platforms and multiple consoles and the amount of money that goes into subscription services ends up being a little bit more costly. I was kind of running the numbers. Again, the Steam Deck did all this. I blame Valve 100% for this shift in my narrative and my interest. Also, the discovery that I was very, very blinded by my old ways of thinking, right? So I, I looked into it. PlayStation 5, 500 bucks, uh, a year of PS Plus premium, realistically being, uh, who knows if they're gonna raise it, but we're just gonna stay at 18 for the time being, times 12, which is 100 and, I mean, 216, so $700. Let's just keep it at a 750 with tax for everything for the PlayStation 5 for a year, just one year of PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S with the uh, gaming, with, you know, Game Pass, which I wouldn't, with PC, I have no desire to get Game Pass, PC Game Pass because I have all the games that I want to play that are on PC Game Pass. It's called Halo. <laughs> That's it. And so that ends up being another 350 plus, uh, what is it? 350 plus, uh, is it 18 again? So three, let's just say three, 650. So that is 1300 bucks ish around 13 
uh, for those two systems to be maintained over time and continue on. And then from there, uh, Nintendo, we're just waiting at this point, right? Um, the next Nintendo device to come out, who knows when it's gonna be released. And with that, there's only one thing I'm gonna be purchasing for that device, and it's no longer gonna be stuff like um, Metal Gear Solid or some of these other games that are available on multiple platforms, because I'd rather just play it on better portable hardware, like a Steam Deck. It's gonna be something just like Zelda, and games I'll actually play as well. And so I was, again, running the numbers and over the past three years of me having these devices and paying for those subscription services, even though they fluctuated in devices in, amount, in the amount of money, I have um, effectively spent the amount that I would be spending on a gaming rig. Now, I know that gaming rigs, you need to upgrade here and there and there's parts and components, but let's be real. You don't have to upgrade your graphics card, your CPU every year. You can let those things cook for a little bit of time. And as the years go on and the demanding, the graphics are more demanding, you just kind of take steps back on your performance and you, you know, maintain higher frames and drop resolution, whatever it may be. Very, very possible. Um, but you have the flexibility. It wasn't cost effective. It's not cost effective. <laughs> There it is, I said it. Doing the math, it's not cost effective. I know that you can be like, well, you don't have to buy the subscription services. You don't, you really don't. You absolutely don't, and you're correct. If you don't play online, you do for some games, but Fortnite, you don't, you know, like, yes, you're absolutely correct. You do not have to, and you can save a lot of money, but I'm not saying that everybody, I'm saying for me. For me, it has been um, not cost effective. I could have spent the $2,000 that I've been spending on these consoles um, to play on PC. Now. I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, what about Final Fantasy VII Reunion? You'd have to own a PlayStation 5. You're correct, I would. And so there takes a chunk of money out of it. Um, and I'm not trying to prove that PC is better than console or this, that, and the other. Simply what I'm trying to say is, after owning the Steam Deck OLED for almost 40 days now, I haven't touched my Nintendo Switch. My PlayStation 5 only gets turned on for Final Fantasy VII Reunion and Fortnite because it's not available on this. And I wanna play on PC. It's as simple as that. It's really as simple as that. I, I've found that in this time as a father, I needed to simplify everything. This channel is too complex. Far too complex. Nintendo had my heart for the longest time, but it was kind of like a relationship I had where it was good. It was a good relationship. And they were the highest of highs, the highest of highs. But I'm sitting here waiting and going, when is the next piece of hardware going to come out? When am I going to be able to play games, new games the way I want to? And can we just be honest? Kind of sick of that. <laughs> really. I don't want to have to wait for new hardware, new stuff. I just want to play games, at least with PlayStation and Xbox. When they release a new piece of hardware, it's just a better version of what they had before. Not introducing anything new. PlayStation's more powerful and has, I guess, a new controller. Xbox, the same, more powerful and their controllers, I guess, the same. Nintendo's something new every time. And so we're always waiting for that innovation, which is exciting, but I'm tired. I, I, I'm not like the other gamers in this space, clearly. I jump around a lot because I'm just trying to figure out what works. I'm just trying to figure out what gaming console is gonna be, or gaming experience, I guess. I guess caffeine in consoles was a shot that was a mistake. Par for the course, am I right? Realistically, I just, not gonna change anything, but I just wanna be able to play games in any room of my house and have a better experience when I'm sitting at my desk. That's really where I'm at right now. I wish that PlayStation, the cross saves with PC, that'd be great. But I've looked into the future of what is at least known to us from the gaming world. We know what PlayStation's dropping in the next year. It's gonna be some stuff. We know what Xbox is because they show all their cards and they try to like get you excited to keep you involved. 
no clue what Nintendo is. But if I'm just going based off of Xbox and PlayStation, once I finish Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I will have no reason to continue using my PlayStation 5 other than, other than Fortnite. And I guess Call of Duty, if I continue playing that. Both of which would be available to me. Fortnite, I wouldn't have to buy. Call of Duty, I would. But Fortnite would be available to me on PC with controller, which is how I play. And uh, that's pretty much it. I guess what I'm trying to say is I am so impressed with the gaming experience and the flexibility that I didn't know existed in the Steam Deck that it revitalized, or not revitalized, but it reignited my passion for playing video games because I now have a way to play that isn't tying me to a spot and making me a recluse. Final Fantasy VII is doing that, <laughs> for sure. But we don't always get Final Fantasy VII's every month, right? We don't get those games all the time. We don't get whatever it may be. For you, you may think that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is not worth it in the slightest. It's fine. It could be something, it could be Baldur's Gate, it could be whatever. It could be some, some indie that you're, not, you know, eastward, whatever it may be. We don't get those every month. We have to look and search the nooks and crannies of gaming to find games, play games of old, whatever it may be, in order to have good experiences. Because every month we don't get new ones, right? And so, for me, if that's the way gaming has become, because releases are becoming more and more spread out, because budgets are becoming bigger, and so they have to really, really hit home with games in order to make it really worth the budgetary whatever, I want to be able to play the games in between these giant, huge, massive titles flexibly. Flexibly? Flexibly. In a flexible way. Got it. And I don't want to have to buy, just like people who, like, I don't know if I'm on Epic Store or on the, you know, on Microsoft or if it's over on uh, Activision or where is it, you know? I want one. Just one. I've invested all of my PC gaming games, all that stuff, is on Steam right now because the Steam Deck. Is, am I going to buy things on Epic Store? I have no reason to, at least now. Sure, Kingdom Hearts is over on the Epic Store, but as of now, I have the PlayStation 5. When the PlayStation 5 Pro comes out, is it gonna be something that I'm really looking to purchase? If I'm being honest with you, if I have a gaming PC, no. Gosh, it's crazy to think. I guess at the end of the day, I just, when it comes to gaming, I want it to be easier and simpler. And I don't want to have to wait and speculate. I just want to be like, yeah, I got the machine that does the job and it'll always do the job. Always. And as far as the PlayStation is concerned, let's do that. Nintendo, eventually, right? Yeah. Interesting, right? I'm curious what you guys think of all this. If you've been here for a while, let me know. Steam Deck has transformed the way I look at video games, and now has set a standard, not graphics, but flexibility, a requirement um, as a father that has to be met, otherwise I'm not gonna get the game. Seven Rebirth is the only game that is drawing me out of that ecosystem, but moving forward, if I can't play it on a Steam Deck, I'm not gonna play it. With the exception of, I guess, Nintendo, but. I'm not going to pick up Luigi's Mansion Remake. You know, Paper Mario, if I'm being honest with you, I probably won't finish it. And it hurts me, it pains me. It doesn't pain me, it doesn't hurt me. That's stupid, this is so ridiculous. It surprises me that I wouldn't be gung-ho for everything Nintendo when I tried so hard, but really I think I was just convincing myself when in reality, I was gonna become a PC gamer. I guess that's kind of the natural progression of things. You play consoles for long enough and you go, hmm, maybe there's something missing. And for me, it's not performance, it's ease, or not ease even, it's access. I don't wanna have to worry 
that my device is no longer going to support my game. And I don't want to worry that my device is going to be hard to grab. I don't want to deal with the next generation of console gaming. If I'm being honest with you, I don't want to deal with these dumb scalper things. Sure, graphics cards are being scalped left and right, but once a rig's built, it's built. I don't want to deal with this can't get my hands on this. It's dumb, it's ridiculous. And I just don't want to deal with it. I don't have time for it, dude. I don't have time for it. I want to play games. I want to play games. And so if the best and easiest way to play is on PC, who am I to say that that's not where I'm gonna go next? The Steam Deck sure has proven its case. If you wanna get that mug, when you buy that mug, I get four bucks, which is about the cost of ground beef, so I'll be able to buy my family some burgers. If you sign up for the channel membership, it's about the cost of four apples, and so we'll be able to have apples and burgers, which is pretty healthy if I do say so myself. This cup of coffee was mediocre at best. It is two different coffee beans that are somewhat flat that I combined, shook it up, and made a blend. Don't even know what it is but tastes fine. Again, let me know in the comments below what you think of all this. Surprising. And in the next video, I will show you the very things I keep on my Steam Deck at all times. And the case I use, I've used a few different ones, but this is my loadout. And um, it's the way it's gonna stay because it's good enough for me and that's good enough. <laughs> no need to change it. All right guys, have a good one. And uh, as always, my console gaming may change, but this won't. Happy gaming.